Hello everyone, I'm Tim from Tim's PC and I build custom PCs to suit anyone's needs or budget. Also live stream my builds and repairs for transparency and educational purposes. So if you'd like to get an awesome new PC and would like to see it put together live, send me a message today. Alrighty, so tonight we're going to be building, sorry it's not, I've, I've got it wrongly described. I've got it wrongly described as a 3070 Ti. For some reason I had it. This is just me at tax time doing a hundred quotes. We got a 3080 here for tonight, so don't don't mind don't mind that that problem with the title. I think Christine's going to fix that up while while I wait. I think it was in the description there as well. Yeah, that's just a sign of the times. I'm going to make these sort of administrative errors. <laughs> but anyway, the. This is what's on the invoice. This is what we. This is what I ordered, and this is what we're going to be building tonight. So, alrighty. Well, look, I've wasted enough time here tonight. I think I might just jump straight into it. So we got the RTX 3080, as I said. We've also got the Ryzen 5600. We've got the MSI B550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, same motherboard from last night. We got a two terabyte hard drive and a 500 gigabyte SSD, an 850 watt power supply. We got a liquid cooler there for the CPU. It's an Antec Symphony 240, and we're going to be putting it into an Antec DF 700, I believe it is, Dflux 700. So this is basically. If, if, you're, if you're unfamiliar, this is basically the same case as the Antec D600 Flux. It's just got a different front panel on it, essentially. But other than that, for, for all intents and purposes, it's the same case. It's got the same included RGB and fan controller around the back there. Three included front fans there that are addressable RGB. So, a pretty decent value proposition for anyone looking for a case. Alrighty. We've got our motherboard. And we'll get our some of this other shit we need later. Christine will probably have those, the, the, my crappy memory wiped over with the correct description of this build. Alrighty. Yeah. Hey, Fiona, how you going? Done with your hair. <laughs> like what I've done with my hair. I've done I've done shit with my hair. Man, as soon as my hair's long enough to do anything with, I cut it. That's that's kind of how I roll. <laughs> Alrighty. Obviously had this this PC mixed up in my head with another PC, which is not surprising. I've had I've had 90, 97 messages on Facebook in the last seven days. So that's a pretty decent number of inquiries there. Yeah. Hey George, how you going? So yes, I can I can send you a, a tracking link for your computer. Finally, George's computer was oversized and wouldn't be, wouldn't be shipped through Ospost. It wouldn't be shipped through Sendor. It wouldn't be shipped through Couriers Please or any of the usual mobs there. So I had to take it into PackSend, and it was a total of 600 grams underweight or something or 1.6 kilos underweight from being having to be put on a pallet 
because it was just that large. So that wouldn't have been good if we had to put it on a pallet just to get it to George. But anyway, we should get that on Monday because it's going by Road Express. Because I think George is the person who's waited the longest pretty much out of anyone for a PC off me. Yeah, I think so. I think so. By a long shot, actually. Alrighty. Where's our memory? Our memory's fallen on the floor. Look at that. Kind of got nowhere really good to put memory to take photos of it. I've just got to sort of perch it up somewhere. One and two. And so you always have the sticks in slot one of each individual channel. So there's two channels there over four slots, so that's why they're uh, a slot apart. And the reason is the CPU can talk to both channels at the same time, so there's a latency improvement by having your memory in two different channels there, split across the two. So that's why you see that configuration coming up again and again and again in all sorts of PCs all around the place because of that latency improvement with memory, which affects how smooth everything seems to run. Oh, is this that? Oh, it is. This is that board that was that was opened up to, to test that random person's CPU. I'm looking for Stock AMD backplate. Tim. Yeah. Yeah, no, so it's 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 coming, George, it's coming. Ah! It's just been yeah, it's been I just closed Oh good one babe. She's good at that. Oh what do I do? What do I do? Fixed it. Did, did you fix it in ways you, you'll see in the budget? <laughs> um, depends on you. Are you are you planning on buying a super high end, super high powered PC to run a forty series card? Because. Basically, they're just going to ramp more power through what I believe is a pretty similar sort of architecture, 30 series. They've just refined it and they're just running more, running more power through it to get you more performance. So, 
they're not even releasing 40 series cards for like, you know, 30, 70s and stuff are going to keep being sold. They just won't sell 30, 80s anymore. So if you want to get a 30, 80, your time is, your time is ticking. Okay. The availability on them is, is going to run out very soon. And so just consider that a lot of people, a lot of people only upgraded to 30 series from 10 series. They skipped 20 series altogether. I'd say a lot of consumers are going to be in a similar boat for 40 series. So unless you need the upgrade right now, or yeah, you're like super, super keen and you always have to have the best, then yeah, maybe maybe it's not not so big a deal. Who knows? It's not out yet. Hey John, how you going? Ah, awesome. Sorry about the missed description at the start there. Done another quote for, for someone in a very, very similar situation to you, and I think I think I did it for a 3070 Ti, and that's and that's where I stuff up at first with the description. I need an assistant. I need a full-time assistant, personal assistant. We get lots done then, I think. No, normally it's fine, it's just this time of year everyone wants a piece here. AMD arms attached. Always pull off your protective coating for the copper block there. And then we have our multi manufacturer backplate. So Intel and AMD. And, like I said last night, we installed one of these last night. Let's put the, the little stopper over the bolt. The bolt sits in place in one direction only. So you just rotate it to find that direction. There's always there's always some issues with any new generation of silicon. So I don't want to I don't want to go on record and say I don't think there'll be any issues. But um, I'm sure that I'm sure that the issue if any issues occur, I'm sure they'll be um, they'll be addressed quite rapidly by by AMD.
Because, I mean, you know, if you had said, if you had said 15 years ago, right, that AMD would have a shot at beating Intel, everyone would have laughed at you. You say that now, and nah, not so much. It's a bit more. It's a bit more of an even, an even fight. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see what we'll see what happens. I'm very excited about the, the the new gen of AMD. I'm waiting to see what what they fire back because Intel released their 12th gen. It's got got its good points and stuff, and you know I'm waiting to see what what AMD's response to that is because and especially because you know it's um their Ryzen their Ryzen platform is certainly maturing at this point so yeah we're gonna see we're gonna see some pretty good things from them I would imagine. I don't imagine it's gonna be a step backwards from from um from Zen 3. So that's that's my that's my thoughts on it. I'm sure your thoughts are Probably fairly similar if you're paying attention to what's going on and stuff. But yes, we all just have to wait and see. There could be, there's always issues with, with new products, I'll say that much. Um, did I get any thermal? Oh yeah. I've got other thermal here anyway. Yeah. Well, the thirty, the thirty fifty is the is the fifty series. They they released they released that because it's sort of I I'm I'm guessing I'm guessing it's you, you're comparing it to the wrong card. Basically, I think you should be comparing it to like a sixteen uh, sixteen sixty super or something like that. Um, that would probably be a, a better comparison because that's where it sits because the 2060 is still a thing because it's still on the market right so they're still selling it yeah that's 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 pretty much that's pretty much the, the reason why people are a little bit confused about the 3050 where it sits etc you just got to remember by comparing it to the 2060 you're comparing it to the the um, the genera the the series above it. It's like it's like comparing it's like comparing a, a 1060. It's like yeah, it's like comparing a, a 1050 to a 10 to a 2060 or something like that. Basically, it's not you're not you're not doing a you're not doing like a, an apples for orange comparison between the two. So. I would probably look at the performance of 16 series and what the, what the performance you're getting from 3050, that was their idea of, of um, sort of following up on 16 series, because I mean that's ancient at this, t at this stage, so yeah that's just that's just my thoughts on it, that's just my thoughts on it, I'm not, I'm not privy, I'm not privy to all the information in the in the meetings and stuff, I don't know what they talk about. I just I just hear the news and and speculate.
Yeah. Ah, so it's a it's a Ryzen 56. It's an MSI B 550M Pro VDH Wi-Fi, 500 gigabytes of SSD storage, two terabyte hard drive, RTX 3080, 850 watt power supply, and going into an Antec D 700. I've also got a 240 mil Antec Symphony cooler on it. What's that? Antec. Ram. Oh, Ram. Um, Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB 3200 megahertz CL16. Alrighty, so we just get we just get this one cable coming off our cooler block there, and that can probably just go straight up and around the back side of our board. Now we get pre-installed what's this pre-installed fan splitter so we can just plug one water fan power into those two fans and then we've also got our daisy chainable RGB connections and they are also coming off our pump give you a bit of an idea of how that's all going to go together. Alright, so another cooler. Save them up, I've got a guy in Tasmania who'll pretty much buy all the all the excess stock coolers that I end up with. I end up with heaps. I wait till I can ship him a whole box. <laughs> ship him a whole box, because he's because he does a lot of he does a lot of pre-built PCs, and um, so he's always he's always like buying tray CPUs, um, like bulk and stuff like that. And he does all that. He does all that sort of stuff, and he, so he frequently run out of coolers. So he'll pay good money. For coolers. Well, not good money, but yeah. I sell them to them about 30% of the cost <laughs> at a retail store because they're free. I don't, I don't pay anything for them. It's just a cost. It's just a thing that I get for doing business. I'm never going to run out of them. If anyone ever wants one, <laughs> you want me to include the stock cooler? You can. I can I'm all more than happy to do that. But most people have absolutely no. So, alrighty, so we've got our board all prepped, we've got our fans all sort of wired up there, we just got to connect them to our motherboard when it's in the case. So now we can turn our attention to this case and getting our power supply, hard drive and everything else in there. So yeah, RTX 3080, man, like, this kid, this kid will be able to dominate. Most people don't have RTX 3080, so that's the thing, right? There's a lot, but it can seem like everyone's got Not everyone has. And like like I was saying before, people with from 10 series, people who bought a, a 1080 back in the day, you know, a lot of them didn't upgrade until 30 series came out, and they were like, oh man, it's like it's like hundreds of frames per second better. I'm definitely upgrading for that sort of thing. So I'll put a couple of bolts in here on our hard drive. And then that can go down here and I can store 
the majority of the games that we don't play all the time, because all the games we're going to play all the time, we'll put on the SSD so they boot faster. While it doesn't matter having your hard drive, sorry, it doesn't matter having your hard drive. It doesn't matter having your games on your hard drive, but it will make them load a little bit slower. It won't affect you while you're actually gaming. So for all the games that you don't play as often, put them on the hard drive. And, and the ones that you play like every day and stuff, put them on the SSD. That's what you, that's the rationale with it. And like a lot of people, they might only have one game that they super frequently play, like Fortnite or Warzone or something like that. So, you know, for them, it, it might, you know, you might only need one or two games installed on your SSD, you can leave the rest of the space for Windows and apps, really. Because you don't want to have no room on your on your Windows drive. You know what I mean? You don't want to have no room to download anything and do anything with your computer. Yeah. Oh yeah, well, yeah, the silic, well, the silicon shortage. That was that was what it that was what it was. The the, the, the great silicon shortage of 2020-2021. We've been watching a bit of. Clark and Door, and I feel <laughs> like I feel like everything we're talking about here is a perfect sketch. This is so Yeah. Oh, not not really. Determining, it, determining if it's in good condition is if it heats up and runs the benchmark. <laughs> uh, that's the problem, right? I would, I would basically, I would basically never pay much for something that's come from a mining rig because I don't know. I don't know exactly what they've done with it and stuff like that and I don't want to um Yeah. I, I wouldn't I, I personally I'd steer away from that unless I got it at a really good price. If I got it at a really good price, it's like hell yeah. But um yeah. Don't take any risks, people. <laughs> Not, not like, like stupid risks. Don't take any stupid risks. <laughs> Alrighty, so we've got a modular power supply here. Can I go Yeah, yeah, look, we're, we're coming along. <laughs> Antex got your back, pre-mounted fans oh, on, the, on their cooler. I didn't even notice that. Yeah. Ooh, cool. Okay, here we go. So these, these Antec coolers, there was a thermal take one in, in the quote. This is a better one because it's got a three year warranty. Yeah. So that's I'm, what you want. I'm I'm um yeah, the the retailer I use to generate that parts know, list. These ones they don't look better too. They don't have they don't have this one in stock. So I'm I'm currently substituting that on on the visual part list that I send people um, with with this cooler because it's a much better cooler. Because fundamentally what you're paying for with coolers and warranties, right? It, it's the pump. Okay? The pump is the main moving part in it. The pump is what moves liquid through the whole thing. The fans 
who cares? A fan dies. We just unbolt the fan and bolt in a new fan. Nice and easy. If the pump dies, that's inside the unit. That's that's a pain in the ass. You can't fix that basically once that dies. So the main thing you pay for is the warranty on the pump. You want a good pump for your all-in-one liquid cooler. Because there's no point, there's no point in having having a crappier pump. I mean, I think I think maybe I installed I installed a couple of crappy AIO coolers at the height of COVID when money was tight and people were trying to sort of scrape together a a gaming rig and stuff like that. However, my crew will literally. I, 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 that's that's the last thing I I would I offer people <coughs> under normal circumstances. You can get coolers with up to six year warranties on them. So if you get if you pay a bit extra, you can get one of the good brands like. Corsair or NZXT, then you know you're, you're in for a bit of luck. That they'll, you know, if that thing fails like month nine of year four, oh well, you get a brand new one with another five year warranty. <laughs> That's pretty cool. So yeah. That's that's why that's why you do it. That's why you do it. We're not. It's not just people wasting money on brands need, needlessly and shit like that. It, it makes sense when you think about it. You have your computer for you know, nearly five years, and then the CPU cooler dies, and then you get a new CPU cooler. That's not bad. That happened to my parents once with a with a washing machine that died right before the end of the warranty. Got a brand new washing machine. <laughs> All right, I don't think I need any more cables for this. Can yeah. Oh, cable model streamers. Um, well, I've got streamers in my own. So I guess, I guess that means, I guess that means that, but I mean, I don't just like one, I don't like one PC. There's not just one PC style that I like. So I, I can appreciate almost, almost any PC if it's decent. So, yeah. case has the ability to allow you to mount the power supply face up or face down and the reason why you'd want to get consider one or the other is normally fan like fan down on the power supply so sucking cool air in from the outside of the case and then it's blowing it straight out the back without blowing it into the case. That's normally the gold standard. The only time that you don't do that is if you're going to be putting the computer on carpet. Maybe like, maybe like some carpet might be okay. But honestly, if you've got it on carpet, have the, don't have the power supply fan sucking in like that because the power supply will overheat before the rest of it overheats. So it'll just shut itself off and it won't turn itself back on and you think the whole thing's fucked. So alright. Yep. Hey Brad, how you going? Good to have you with us. So 
So as I always do, I just sort of stuck these cables behind that lip there. I find I only have to tie them up just up here. So just one cable tie there. No, there's no RGB fan at the back. We can add an RGB fan if they want. But it's no problem. So yeah, if you want an extra RGB fan there, they're eighteen dollars. Um, and yeah, just let me know. But I'm brand new in a box behind me. Alright, so what have we got to do to this case? We've got a couple of things to do. We've got some offsets to readjust. So just two of them. So we're mounting a micro ATX board into an ATX case. By default, these offsets are for full-size ATX boards in this case. Yeah. Yeah, so the, the 980, you've got the, you the heatsink on the 980 and no heatsink on the 970. Yeah, and that's, that's exactly what you would expect. It's not, it's not, um, the heatsink's, the heatsink's probably doing its job. Night, um, Gen 4 SSDs run hot. I've got, I've got one in my computer, just a 500 gigabyte one. It's an Aorus one and it's got a full copper block on top of it. That's a heat sink. It's got a solid piece of copper on the M2 drive and that just plugs straight into the wall. So that gives you an idea of, of sort of how warm they get. So, so yeah, that's not, that's not unusual. That's why they started putting heat sinks on. Nothing wrong with your nothing wrong with your drives or anything. It's, they're, they're working just as expected. Alrighty, so we've got an I/O shield that needs to go on here before we put our board in the case. So that looks like one case all ready to get our motherboard and our cooler.
Alrighty, so for our cooler. couple of bolts in our radiator. Very good. We'll stash those spare cables down with the power supply. CPU power cable from up here. So this one here is the fans on our radiator. I'm going to plug them into our CPU fan header.
can plug in these RGBs around here. Okay, so we've got our RGB and our fans associated with our pump and our radiator. So they're, they're all sorted. We need to hook up this power for the pump, this power for the RGB controller. So there are addressable cables, power cables, front panel cables. So we're coming along. So front panel audio. I'm going to slide this guy down here.
USB 3. And just like that, we're nearly done. Oh, this is, oh, this is, yeah. We moved to, like, the hot spot of those things. Oh, there's heaps of that in Logan, man. She's never lived in Logan. No. She's never lived in Logan. Neither have I. But I've got friends. So, that counts for something. Wynnum is not the wood. Um, Wynnum's the working class wood. Well, it, it, it kind of was back in the day, kind of, but not really. It's the working class area. <laughs> <laughs> Ah, 
RTX 3080 time. Oh, one thing I will do first though. we plug in this graphics card it's going to be obscured this is a long boy you could buy an eagle so there was some like issues with some of the eagles and stuff like that um, but that was all the 3060 Ti's and, and stuff like that no issues with the 3080's I remember the first time, first time I got one for a customer after they were released and I was, I'd, I'd just done a 3060 Ti Eagle build and, and I wasn't very happy with it, like in terms of its temperatures and stuff like that. The card just ran really hot. But then no issues with the Eagle 3080's or the Eagle 3080 Ti's. So go nuts, people. They've got, a, they've got a good cool on them. And finally, now yeah, graphics card now. We'll probably run that just out the same hole as the motherboard. Okay. So last thing that I have to plug in around the back here is our hard drive. And we don't do that because Windows does something stupid with the boot manager. Don't worry. I've explained it before and it's not very exciting. have five display outputs on this graphics card, three display ports, 
which are what you want to be using for high refresh rate monitors and stuff. So they're for gaming. HDMI is just the just the compatibility sake, really. Yeah. Ah yes. I'd I'd love to I'd love yes, to I'd, is, I'd love to do that. It's taking a while. Yeah, getting through everything right now is a little bit a little bit hectic. Right. It says Sapphire Raid on H D seventy nine seventy gear edition six Jesus, what was that? I didn't quite get that. HD 7970 gigahertz edition. Oh god. That's 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 old. That's really old. Alright, we're about to fire fire up this PC. We're gonna get this <laughs> It's bit product is being discontinued. Yeah, it's old. I'm like, where's the fucking price? <laughs> Christine's running around and thinking it's something new. <laughs> HD 7970. Yeah, that's new. Nah. Uh, there's this one with the Sapphire Radio and the RX 6900 XT. Yeah. That's nice. We just did a 6900 XT liquid cool. Yeah, but this one's different. <laughs> well, la dee da. Are we ready to fire her up? Because I'm waiting on you. Why? To share the screen. Oh. <laughs> I know it's going to work. I know it's going to turn on. I don't know the next, the, the screen part. That's the part that I don't know. <laughs> Looks like we, we're posting. That is a post. Straight into BIOS. Okay. Oh, we got version 2.90. Fancy. Um, right. I need a Windows USB. And then we can start installing Windows.
Alrighty, so we don't end up enter product keys. Why? Windows 10 education. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely. Have you got a vacuum cleaner that blows, or even the hair dryer on cool. Yeah. Like, or yeah, blow a it. leaf blower. Yeah. Blow the blow any dust out of it as it as it starts to accumulate. It'll happen. That's that's pretty much it. The I mean, the like for example, like you got a you got a you know, three year warranty on the on the pump and the graphics card, the motherboard and the CPU and all that sort of stuff. So, yeah, just clean it. Just like a, just like a car, you don't have to just, well, you've got to maintain a car, I guess. But with this, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of designed to just run, basically. Unlike, unlike basically, sort of similar to a car. Um, if you just leave it running and never shut it down, ever, <laughs> that's pretty, that's pretty, um, what would you say? That's probably the, the safest thing for a computer, believe it or not. Because the problems occur when you shut it down and go to try to turn it back on again. Right? A lot of the time, right? 
So statistically, if you just leave it on, it's fine. I've, I've, had, a, I've had a computer left on for more than a year. It's, it's not, you don't need to change the oil on it or anything like that. <laughs> It's not like that. Just keep it clean and free of dust because dust will cause it to start to overheat and then it'll crash and then it'll cause you problems. Get rid of all the dust. Other than that, as long as you don't mess around with it, you don't play around with, like, I don't know, whatever you play around with, you won't have any problems. Okay, so we are in Windows now. I do remember these guys are in Queensland, so we'll set it to Brisbane time. And we get rid of that crappy mail app. That, that, where's my SSD going? Most of Windows Update, see it's already found a lot of stuff. That will do its thing. We've got an MSI motherboard. Free trial, it's free. Is our graphics card driver. For our stress test. Tell you the health of your storage devices, so every mark lets you test the speed. Thermark I use for the stress test, you can uninstall it when I'm done. Um, no, no, I
Alright, I think I've got everything I need from in here. Alrighty, the only issue is over here we've got our local disk C, but we don't have our two terabyte hard drives. We'll fix that up. Because even though we've connected it, we need to create a partition in order to do anything with it. So I'm going to call the partition storage hard drive or hard disk drive. So it's really clear what it is.
Alrighty, got a few other things to install there. Everything else is pretty good. We'll turn off stuff that we don't want to open up automatically every time we turn on the computer. That shit's really annoying. Sweet. And now it wanted to now it's just like crash on me. Screw you. I don't have time for that. Alrighty. of those driver updates from MSI and then everything else is all ready to go.
Yep, we're at our blue two. Looks like we're pretty much all ready. Well, let's just start with our benchmarks here. We're on heaven, high, no anti-aliasing. So this number here below RAM is how many frames per second it's currently running at. I tried running a benchmark and, and sorry, um, MSI, their update program, the AMD chipset drivers. Oh, I've decided to it, restart. It, a re it likes to force a restart. Oh, yeah. It's real particular about it. <laughs> <laughs> Center. So MSI Center will allow you to access Mystic Light, which is the application that will control your RGB lighting. So it's all hooked up to be controlled with software. Sweet. So now we can do what I was prematurely doing before, and that's run Heaven Benchmark. I no anti alias. Kid will be happy when he sees the frame, right?
Alrighty, so that was Valley there on the out of the box settings. The next one we run is, sorry, that was Heaven. This is Valley. You can tell them get tired. We're going to do this one on Ultra with Max anti-aliasing. So this is a more demanding benchmark anyway, and we've run it on Max settings. So it's a bit of a different workload. Yeah. So that was Valley. And the next one we run is the 4K benchmark because with a 3080, 4K gaming is, is, is pretty much a breeze. This app like stalls like that. Alrighty.
Alrighty. And that was our 4K benchmark. And so now the final part of the night is where we basically just generate a bit of heat and make sure that the system deals with it properly. That's that's about the simplest way I can put it. Into this big furry donut down this corridor. That'll give the graphics card something to do and we'll give the CPU something to do as well. The next 90 minutes. Oh, that didn't seem like it. Now we're giving our CPU a bit of a stress, but that cooler is going to make light work of it. 60 degrees, it can go up to 95 degrees. It's not, it's not going to touch 95 degrees. Here's our graphics card going very very nicely that can go up to 83 degrees so it's got quite a bit of headroom there in it the memory in a hotspot can go up to 100 so plenty of headroom there the values will start turning red for you in hardware monitor if there's a problem and if you do have red values in hardware monitor that's when that's when you send me a message and, and go hey I think there's something wrong with my whatever and then we, you work out with me what we're going to do to, to fix it because the situation is you'll be somewhere else and, and you know I'll be able to get you a new part here in Brisbane so it will be depending on what it is you might need help or something like that so instead of you sending your PC all the way back here it's probably going to be easy for you to take it to someone, to someone nearby to do the job and, and, I, can, and I can cover the cost of the replacement part because I'll get a I'll get a warranty replacement for whatever is broken in yours. So that's that's pretty much how it works. So some people they they don't they don't have anyone they can trust locally just to do do something simple like swap out a motherboard or something like that if the motherboard dies and they'll they'll send me back their, their PC just to just to do that. And that's fine, that's fine too. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't care. It's just normally way easier for people if they don't have to like send their computer away to get fixed. They'll normally, they normally opt for that first. But if not, yeah, you can send it back. It's fine. So yeah, we'll just make sure everything's running nicely here tonight, and that'll give me a pretty good indication that. If everything stays good, you're not going to have any heat problems with it. You can put it in a hot room or something like that. And I mean, I'm sitting in a room here right now. It's probably about, it's probably about 25 degrees. I've got the heat on 30. Yeah, it's probably about 20. Yeah, yeah, it's about 25 degrees in here. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit cold with the heater on, but yeah give you an idea of the ambient conditions in the room so you can go and calculate what that what these numbers actually mean in the real world if you know about the real world <laughs> sweet as alrighty well, this is the time of the night where I put it over to anyone else who has any other final questions for me before I sign off, because this is where it gets very boring and repetitive from this stage. I don't do anything new. In fact, I'm going to get dinner. So you can, you can sit here and stare at my chair. Yeah. I need a new chair.
I don't know, is anyone got any other final comments or questions? Oh, no worries. <laughs> Shout out to Lockie and his, ma his, his mate Ned. <laughs> who have been watching young fellas with a very awesome mum who bought him a 3080 PC. So, that is cool mum. Definitely, quite today's standards. Well, the other question, Chris wants to know what's your personal PC specs? It's my personal PC specs. At the moment, I'm running a 12700KF RTX 3080 and 32GB of RAM. I've got a shitload of Corsair QL fans in my case. Uh, streamers. Streamers. How much storage? Got four and a half terabytes of SSD storage. Yeah, I, I, I've, got a, I've got a decent computer. <laughs> like, I, it's it's so overkill for my for me because I, I barely get a chance to use the 3080. So, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, it's too easy, man. Have a good one. Um, fairly frequently, like, like it was a little bit quiet towards the end of June there, but I think that's just like before tax time because yeah. I've had so many messages, so, yeah. When I do absolute shitloads of quotes, I know that at least some of them are going to come back and buy a PC <laughs> off me. <laughs> no, no. No, it's a competitive marketplace. It's a competitive marketplace. A lot of people, a lot of people who send messages are just quote comparing, and and they'll go with the guy who's twenty dollars cheaper, sort of thing. Like you, you, you can't, you can't, you can't win them all. You can't win them all. And I and like you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to compete with people selling like pre-built computers and stuff like that. On you know, I'm offering, you know, the chance to see it get put together, ask questions about it, get to know the system a little bit more before you get it, instead of just getting the thing in a box and just going, oh, sweet, I think it's got that, I think it's that, I think it does that. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. So thanks everyone for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll catch you all in the next video.